Hello, I'm Penelope Maver and welcome to Earth Converse podcast, where we explore our relationship and conversations with the earth, all in the hope of inspiring a deeper connection with ourselves, each other, and the earth that is our home. And today I have Sophia Style here. She um, and I met at the Living and Dying course um, that I've talked about. I've got actually a few people from that, that course now, Diana and Catherine. And Sophia's uh, beautiful partner, Gemma. She was uh, episode seven. And um, Sophia has her own big story and her beautiful offering, Mujer Ciclica, which we'll talk about. Um, mainly, it's been in Spanish so far and it's going to go into English. And uh, we're going to just talk about her beautiful nature connection and her and her work and offerings and we've got a little something special right at the end so welcome welcome <laughs> Sophia thank you so lovely, lovely to have you <laughs> so your nature connection I mean how would you describe it well, when I'm out in nature, I, I'm, I'm a person who uh, now spends many hours in front of a computer, probably like a lot of us. And yet when I go out into nature, I, I feel like something changes in such a big way inside of me and how I feel. It's like this coming home, um, going to what's really important. I always get some inspiration from nature maybe like many people you know we pick we see like stones or sticks or, or objects that um draw you know att attention to and um and i i've always felt like when i'm in nature that i'm receiving messages and, it, and it's just a place where i i can go and always always get guidance and, and answers Mm, even though even even if you're not seeking them like just it's sort of they come anyway there's yeah yeah it's for me it's like that there is so much symbolism constantly it's it's like this language that I love learning more and more um it feels like remembering a, a, an old language um and always um touches me at a very deep level mm, that's beautiful that's beautiful. And I see like my niece and nephew, you know, constantly picking up treasures. Yeah, exactly. And and yeah. now as adults, we're doing, you know, we're reconnecting with them. Yeah. Such exactly. an intuitive thing as a child. What what was your story about growing up? And have you always felt that? Yeah, I I, I grew up in, in Mexico. My my family are, are British and my parents moved to Mexico when I was a baby which was a really big step for them, a complete change of culture. Wow, why did um, they do that? Um, through my, my dad's work, yeah. He, he got a job in Mexico City and they um, both knew Spanish. They'd studied um, Spanish in Spain and just, yeah, took on this, this big change, big adventure. Um, with a, with a, a six-month-old baby when I <laughs> was incredibly brave. It is. Yeah, yeah. And um, my my memory of, of Mexico, in, yeah, just takes me to the, 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 this place of um, a lot of magic. Uh, we went out, we lived in Mexico City, but every weekend we would go out and, and discover places in nature. And, and I just remember this part of myself feeling very wild and free and... Um, yeah, also we um, we had um, a very strong connection with a beautiful in indigenous woman who lived with us and 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 helped in the in the home. And I made such a a connection and friendship with her. And I always wanted to dress in her clothes and went to visit her family and in her village. And and I think that's also a very important um, mm. part of my story and connection, you know, from uh, Mexico. Yeah, keep going on that. <laughs> yeah, it's um, I've always been drawn to uh, to traveling back to, um, yeah, rural areas, countries where also through my my anthropological studies, where um, I've been in communities and 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 feel that that connection with nature is is so alive. I mean, very direct, also just on a 
more survival, you know, day to day level, but also at a, at a deeper spiritual level. And I've also always felt that when I'm in um, rural communities, it where I've been in India or Bolivia or Mexico, different parts of the world, I'm always struck by the way that, that people communicate. It, it's a, it always feels to me like um, there are much less masks than, than the kind of masks that we mm. gradually build up. Um, it feels to me much more in Western culture that, that we kind of hide behind. And, and I, I love the feeling of, of communication in, in, in the communities I've, I've traveled to and lived in that feels much more direct from the heart, much more straightforward and honest and, and deep, but in a very simple way, you know, it's, it's, it's always struck me um, when I travel out of Europe, Western Europe, Western culture, how, um, yeah, that, that deep, um, genuine connection, you know, to ourselves, to nature, to each other feels, feels more alive to me. Yeah. And what is it that trigger in you, your own connection? Is it like um, that I, I can also have that? Like, is it part of your way of being, you know? Because because part of when we attract, when we see something, mm. we know it, we only can identify yeah. that uh, because it's part of us. As exactly, yeah. exactly. That that's it. It's, it it just feels like something very familiar, and and yeah, that same feeling of of you know going into a, a, a you know, the woods and, and feeling like it's coming home. You know that sense of of connection in in community, which which is what has drawn me so much to working in circles in women's circles and um, or you know women and men together when we, we sit and, and share in in the form of a circle it, it also takes me to that very different way of communicating that that feels um, yeah a very much a part of me um, I, don't, I don't know really how because I didn't grow up with that at all in fact it, you know it was um, my family and the, the kind of traditional British culture is, is actually, you know, can really disconnect you a lot from your feelings. And, um, and yet I've always, yeah, looked for that and, and, and feel so relieved when I can find that, that way of connecting with yeah. other people. Yeah. Lovely. And this woman that um, worked in your family home, what was her name? Oh, Audelia. Adelia. And so she, did she inspire you in terms of anthropology or what's your story there that you sought out anthropology? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that the, the thread of connection is, is definitely there with her. Um, and yeah, I, I, as I was um, studying at university, I just um, really you know, wanted to deepen that, that connection and, and, and understanding and, um, and that um, opened up more and more for me as a, as a woman in my path as a woman. Um, that was, that was another kind of big, important um, shift in my life and in my teens, like realizing that um, I had a lot of um, rejection of, of my own womanhood. Like when I first started menstruating um, in my family uh in, in it's quite typical in britain to call the menstruation the curse yes you no know, i it come from amazing well from the whole you know burden and and um christian and, and patriarchal culture that that really sees something so basic and and powerful as, as menstruation as as a as a curse you know so it was like so uh, shocking but when I think about it you know afterwards I when I, when I first got my my period I, I said you know I started crying and I said to my mom I've got the curse you know C can you imagine you know what it actually means that that women oh. say that you know that has it gives me goosebumps shudders oh, it, it's, it's, it's very powerful that we we can you know still be using that word without even really you know realizing the implications but really? not surprisingly my my um my periods were, were very painful and I, I yeah I felt that it wasn't a, 
um, a positive experience at all for me. And I thought, as that carried on and on, I just thought this, this can't be, this can't be right. This is something just natural about being a woman every month. And how, I, you know, how can I be uh, experiencing it in such a negative way, you know, month after month? Um, Did you talk to your friends or your mum about it? Like, or was it quite an internal dialogue sort of because of that shame? Yeah, yeah, it was very, very internal, yeah, for the first years. But then gradually um, I began to speak more and more about it. And when I went to university, then I met um, some women who who were part of a, a women's circle. And, and in that, that first women's circle that I sat in, that was one of the things that came out for me, just how incredibly painful my, my periods were because we were doing it w- w- um, with the moon. Um, and I hadn't made really the connection between my menstrual cycle and the moon cycle. And this, this woman in this circle, she said, well, why don't you start just writing down how you feel you know, each day of your cycle and also just see where, where's the moon? And so for the first time, I made this connection as a woman between my inner and hormonal and emotional, mental, physical cycle and and the moon outside and and started to realize that, you know, there was a connection and that the moon was was reflecting so many things that I was feeling inside, like either, you know, being full and, and outward and expansive at times and then other times kind of wanting to disappear and go inwards like the the dark moon and and, wow and that just opened up a whole new world and then the anthropological connection as well like really grew there just um realizing that in 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 many different cultures and traditions around the world that um you know girls were, were celebrated with beautiful rituals when they had their first menstruation Yes. Oh my goodness. Actually, one of your videos I um you said about was it a, a boyfriend sort of said you kind of sit schizophrenic mm-hmm. because yeah. of his moods, but the the introduction to the seeing the lunar cycle and and what it yeah. then changed your perception of that. Um exactly. I mean, in a way, like the whole of uh all the cycles of nature are a, a mirror of this um you know cycle that that women we we have a a particularly strong connection to the um you know the cycles and the the cyclical nature of of being um not that men don't but there's something that we um really experience in our in our bodies in, in a strong way so now it just that as well that my um connection with nature is is so um like brought alive by by seeing the cycles in nature and that just helps me to understand where I am in my own cycle and and honor um, all the changes I go through in myself is like it's fine it's just all you know it's It's all all it all and mother nature and the lunar reflecting back did the the pain go because there's like the idea the Buddha's double arrow, isn't it? There can be physical pain, but it's the our most biggest pain is the judgment of that. So how we analyze yeah. it. So knowing this, did it le- knowing that actually accepting all those changes and those cycles, did it lessen the physical pain? Yeah, I mean, I would. There, there are so many different elements to it, and I never I like. Sometimes I feel like. Um, women come to me so you know kind of wanting some magical kind of formula (laughs) you know I have really bad period pain and I mean I I feel like there were so many different levels that helped um, me to transform um, the pain and I mean the the first the very first start was actually realizing that that well as you say like making a different connection and relation with the pain rather than than fighting exactly and judging it it was like okay it was like I suddenly thought this my pain is wanting to tell me something so it was like I just remember lying in my bed with with a hot water bottle uh, when I was at university and 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 it was like my pain was telling me just to stop and slow down and you don't have to be doing things all the time and 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 having to prove you know and and push and and it was really like a um 
way of my body like shouting and saying stop and then going in and, and listening to everything that came up in in that stopping was just really powerful and it mm. took me on a whole journey as well to my my you know mother line my mother my, my grandmother and that's also been amazing to kind of heal that um connection with the the feminine within my family and uh yeah, I just began to, um, um, yeah, take small steps when every time I had my period, like I made myself this this necklace that I would just put on every time I, I menstruate and just, just small symbols like that, that, that I think started to give my body the message that this was a special time and that I could slow down and that it, and um a whole change as well in my relationship to the menstrual blood which you know many women have also gone through um you know the whole um step of um you know disposable tampons and mm. and, and pads apart from the whole ecological impact it's also like this message that you know you you have to throw your you know your blood away as something to hide and dirty and all all the adverts around that really? and um you know like more and more women are, are now using like the men a, a sea sponge um or um as a tampon or, or the moon cup or the menstrual mm -hmm. cup or washable um, menstrual pads and and for me as well that was an incredible moment where um my it's you know it's an intimate thing to talk about but it's important to me to to share because that that moment of um my menstrual blood in water like um putting that onto a plant and actually realizing that it's full of nutrients you know the yeah. the lining of our womb is, is preparing for to receive a baby you know it's like really and incredibly mm. full of richness and nutrients so again, for me, that that uh, step of um, returning my menstrual blood to the earth and feeling that it's actually nourishing a, a plant or a tree as well, I think that was a, a huge transformation for me. Oh, absolutely. And I look back and I, I'm in menopause now, but, you know, if I had honoured my period in that way, mm -hmm. Mm. Uh, you know chain you know having a different relationship with it was just right at the end you know through mm. nature-based work and I remember Emerald saying that quite often if you go out on a vision quest your period will come yeah the intensity of that and if it does you know bleed on the land mm. and I remember doing that it felt very sacred yeah and exactly. you know yeah and I just I do in hindsight and I've got a friend you know a young friend she's 20 something Thing and really struggling with her period so I've sent her your work she's a uh -huh. speaker so um you know yeah. your all your your offerings of that because uh it's so beautiful and sacred so did you is this did you study um that on and is that your specialty in anthropology in terms of well there was a there was a time yeah when my studies i i went in that direction and not not even within the university it was just like my own passion to to investigate and read about um women's rites of passage and different ceremonies and rituals that um ha have honored you know different stages of women's life so it, the whole yeah connection with um my own healing my own menstrual pain just then opened up so many doorways and um i also spent um several years working as a as a doula with women giving birth i, I just got really passionate about you know like the first men the menstruation when a young girls you know get their first period how to support that in a really affirming way also giving birth and and menopause it was like realizing that um yeah, there are um, many different cultures who have who have honoured those rites of passage um, as the, some you know very powerful spiritual experiences in in women's life. Um, yeah, and then and and all my experience, it's 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 so beautiful, isn't it? When when um, we have a you know a healing experience, something is transformative for for us and often through some 
painful experience but then how um human beings how we have this capacity to <laughs> to transform and then and then share with others you know what what helped us and so really my whole work with Mujer Cíclica is is based on on sharing with with women um you know what what helped me to to live in a in a more um accepting and loving way to myself as a, as a woman it's such a beautiful offering and I guess mm -hmm. what is it is it just you know your own experience and then putting it out there and then noticing that also people want, want yeah. you know that um comfort or actually somebody to lead that conversation or invite yeah. them that mm -hmm. conversation or speak about it because we yeah. just you know it's so so hidden still uh, um Susan Hagele who I interviewed on um, episode 30 she did hormonal healing and she talked you know like where you think about in organizations at any one time how many people um mm. are suffering from yeah. their cycle or you know and um it's such a big issue uh mm. a, you know how we turn up and how we are received and yeah and yeah all the energy that goes to to hiding you know yeah. it's yeah. just uh, <laughs> a, an innate part of you know that there, there still is this this shame this secrecy this um yeah judgments around the menstrual cycle I mean it, it is something very intimate and I think um you know that connection between what, what is sacred and, and intimate and and taboos taboos come around um um yeah situations experiences that that are powerful and 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 need somehow protection you know there are so many menstrual taboos um in in, in different cultures but I, I i loved the um in the time when i was really passionate with with anthropology like kind of um breaking down or questioning what's behind those taboos you know like um some of them are just really practical kind of survival um protection like um you know some in some cultures where there are you living in a in a jungle and there are um you know tigers like what during menstruation the women that there was a taboo that women can't touch the ground you know because they had to be like up in the tree or or yeah or like t not swimming in the sea if you live in a by a river in in brazil with piranhas mm. um you don't want to swim when you're menstruating because the blood will you know mm. so there are some very basic kind of taboos that that are are just to protect us as, as women because we are more vulnerable when we, we forget that in modern culture but we're vulnerable <laughs> <laughs> women in many you know parts of the world are vulnerable um, to wild animals in that moment mm. um, and also there are many taboos which um, help women um, to to stop you know their their act regular activities you know in, in Spain even there are so many taboos about you know not touching specific food you know that um, or or the plant you know not touching plants because you'll, you'll kill the plants you know they all sound very dramatic and very negative, but I, I, I found it fascinating kind of going behind and, and, and seeing it more like um, the intention is that women are not, don't cook when you're menstruating. So you actually have a break. If you can't touch the food, Great idea. you know, you need a break or you can't be, you know, working in the garden or um, in, in some traditions, you know, you're not allowed to see the light in it when, when you're menstruating, but it's like in many ways, you just that's when you want to kind of go into your cave. And, and, and many um, of these taboos were just totally misinterpreted by, by Christian missionaries, you know, when they went to um, you know, communities and saw um, the women in there when they're menstruating going to this. Um, red tents or menstrual uh, lunar lodges and that was seen from this uh, christian perspective um as the women being you know dirty yeah. unclean and have to be separated from and, and in fact um you know it was a, it was a time when women could really come together and 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 rest and um you know their daily tasks were taken on by the grandmothers and the younger women and the, and the men and um 
so it's it's all you know how we how we look at and interpret yeah. these things yeah but there's lovely parallels or messages just even going behind behind the reason behind the taboo mm -hmm. Mm. just once again the sort of how you know cultures and you know either christian missionaries or you know how create that that detachment that separation and creating mm. that 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 harm yeah and not understanding different cultures and mm. imposing a view yeah yeah um, yeah um so so you're you know, you've, you know, your own, your own exploration, anthropological um, perspectives, creating your own offering, is it? Mm -hmm. Or is it, a, is it a mix of, you know, wisdoms or what is, yeah, what is your approach? Yeah, now? there's a lot of different uh, threads now that have brought me to where I am. Um, I mean, living in, in Britain for, for many years, there's the whole um, Celtic connection there. And that's, you know, very strong with the, yeah, the connection with the cycles of the year and the, the eight um, festivals, you know, with the equinoxes and the solstices and the four fire festivals in between. That's really been strongly recovered in, in, in Britain and, and yeah. takes you back to, you know, the, the local um celtic roots um and then yeah dif different travels and and a strong connection with um yeah the indigenous traditions in mexico and and also different native american cultures and then i mean spain as well kind of reconnecting with the land here and um and then bringing it together with more contemporary work and, and, and ceremonies like, you know, the, the course we met in with, with Meredith Little and, you know, this whole movement of um, reconnecting to nature in, in a sacred way. Um, and the, the work of council, I, I did a, also a, a vision quest with Pippa Bondi um, 16 years ago, and I love her work in of reconnecting um, with nature through, yeah, ceremony and medicine walks and so there's like yeah all these different threads coming together and and yeah a lot of women who have been very important for me in this whole um connection to the women's cycles like Miranda Gray and Deanna Lamb and um Vicky Noble well there's 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 so many um amazing teachers you know and, and how to kind of yeah we we, we have all these influences and teachers and then how we make our own tapestry mm. uh, in a, in a mm. genuine way because yeah there's also some yeah a whole issue I think you you are also connected to that you know about uh, what we appropriate from other cultures or how we do it you know and also yeah for me it's so important to name and honor you know the people who, who who've inspired us and, and taught us and somehow that that's not always taken care of nowadays you know there's a lot of you know copying and pasting happening and you know how to make um yeah our offerings really genuine and, and you know that when we create something it really comes from a, a deep inner place not just kind of taking and and appropriating from from others mm. i'm really it's interested in this you know like and how um you know there's a is there a spectrum of i don't know i don't know you know just it's just a real exploration isn't it because yeah. i loved this lovely podcast recently on um good ancestor podcast and this um uh indian indian american woman with Lila Syed and she, uh, Susanna Bakataki, and she's an Indian yoga practitioner, but she's just saying um, about the, uh, the integrity of yoga is lost um, mm. through, because there's so much emphasis on just the physical nature of it, a one hour session yoga, whereas there's a whole wealth of tradition and at mm. least, you know, name it for what it, you know, use the terms. Yeah. And then there's this, but there's also a spectrum. Then there's also like 
whatever works you know if the physical mm -hmm. helps somebody that's okay mm -hmm. or I think I get quite puritan about meditation you know I love mm -hmm. going because vipassana there's a real purity of that mm -hmm. and so I do bristle like at the headspace mm -hmm. um, app you know because uh, I think having meditation on the app is sort of like well that's sort of you know, how does that work? But it's absolutely helped millions more people yeah. than probably Goenka has, even though, you know, so what yeah, is yeah. the spectrum? Is it um, whatever helps, whatever works? Um, we, and we are, we are indigenous as human beings. We're all indigenous to this world. Mm or that actually going out to nature for me is it's an intuitive thing mm -hmm. as a human being mm. or is it actually because I've learned through vision questing in the Native American situation or lens mm. am I appropriating or not or does it go back to intent, you know, if you come from your wholeness? I don't know. I, I'm just exploring it myself and just being aware of yeah. what, what's right. Yeah. No, it's really important to keep all those questions alive, isn't it? Mm. And yet, I, 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 as I said at the beginning, that, that experience of, of going into nature from a place of openness and, and humility um it it does feel like something genuinely cross-cultural can happen there you know that that is is um the, the kind of stories and medicine that we can bring back um you can just feel that re reflected in, in in stories from people from really different um backgrounds and cultures and and there it you know that place you know of of deep union as as human beings um yeah i think that that is something that we can really find and rediscover in 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 nature mm. but you know as you say there there are, I, I know there are groups in in the states who began you know working with vision quests or, or using that term and then they've they've gone through a whole process and, and, and being also challenged by um native american movement and and they've they've stopped using that word and they're now calling instead of vision quest you know wilderness rites of passage or you know it, it is really important to think about the language we use and, and the situation of those cultures nowadays, you know, and, and how there's still so much inequality and, and how we uh, somehow implicitly contributing still to that by not being, you know, more um, politically active or yeah and yeah. also going to the source like you said in terms of the taboos you know who is actually the source you might mm -hmm. find that actually the source is a uh, is um from the african continent a writer a poet i don't know or a scientist mm -hmm. i wonder how many you know things that we are um, we the history we've been taught is from yeah. a, a white western perspective but actually the roots of the work yeah yeah Indeed. or somewhere else thank you for that and I also love this um you know it's the old Rilke part you're know, sitting with the questions actually not mm. closing it down but keeping it open and being yeah. into that inquiry tuning mm. into your own self and being aware um is, yeah is the least we can do yeah. for a start yeah mm -hmm. mm. so um Tell us about um, is what, you know, in terms of your offerings. So you're working mainly in Spanish, but tell us what's coming. <laughs> yeah, so I've been working for um, 16 years in, in Spanish since I moved here to Spain. And uh, this whole project, Mujer Cíclica, which is um, Cyclical Woman, has, has grown over all these years. Um, and... Yeah, this year is I think will 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 be the 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 first year that I really start to open up and, and offer my 
well, it's not quite true. I, I, in the last couple of years um, with my partner, Gemma, we've been offering some retreats together in English. Um, in Holland, uh, we, we offered t- two different retreats together. She's, it's, it's interesting because she's um, Spanish origin, but has been working for many years in English, giving retreats in different parts of the world in English. And, and I'm my... <laughs> Family background is English and my work has <laughs> nearly all been in Spanish. You two are and such then, a great peer. I love this, this union. <laughs> no, it's been a really like fruitful and, and, and beautiful connection through our relationship at lots of levels. And and yeah, one of the, the fruits has been like me um, um, starting to offer my work in English with her. And, and she's now offering much more in Spanish in, in Spain. Um, and also but yeah we we created this um, online course together um, which is called medicine woman a journey to your center and we we created it in spanish but this is the the big step this year is that we've we've nearly finished uh, translating it and um, and now we're in the whole kind of technical side of, of the the online platform to to put it out in english this year um, and that's also been really a, a beautiful experience of bringing together my um, connection with with the cycles and and um, the feminine and, and Gemma's connection with um, meditation and her spiritual path and and in with the medicine woman we it felt like a beautiful fusion of this. Uh, yeah the cycle the spiral the movement the change and then Gemma really brings that kind of place in the center of this um yeah really imagine like this luminous like the candle or the 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 stillness in the center that can also just um yeah understand and and um contain all, all the ups and downs um that the cycles bring Mm. intensity and kind of just also really cultivate that inner place that can kind of witness it and 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 embrace all of it and not be like totally um taken over uh, um by the intensity of the cycles which which can happen as well Uh, the more we go in and and recognize our cycles sometimes that that kind of they, they almost yeah somehow grows no with the the awareness that you put it's like wow you know I'm I'm just there's so many different you know aspects of 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 me of of womanhood and it's and it's great to also cultivate that kind of um eagle vision or lovely the sort of yeah literally the 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 sky and the earth or something isn't it and I Mm. I love that I'm my vision is about being intimately expansive with the world you know and I think I think it you know how do we and all the different parts of us and Mm -hmm. leaning into that and yeah. yeah 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 beautiful um so we'll, and I also think I really admire that you've put in terms of the online offering, you are well ahead of the game uh, now that with um, COVID and so much online work and so many yeah. online programs, but you're well established and you've got that really, you know, a wonderful year long offering of just, yeah. Yeah, no, that, um, about like seven years ago, I, I started creating my, my first online course because I, had um connections with women in um all around europe and and well, mostly spain europe but latin america and it was like well you know i want to share all of this with um with women in other parts of the world and um and i love writing and, and kind of or- organizing ideas in a, in a i love that experience of kind of distilling you know and, and yeah. putting out and, and making it also beautiful I, I've, I've got some fantastic women who work with me and and have helped me to you know make the the design of the courses really inspiring and beautiful and you know it's not only it's like there's a whole creative part of yes. um, and the content but then it's also how do you get it out to people and obviously that's that's not my speciality but it's amazing when you can you know bring together people with all different skills to 
to give birth to something. Yeah, but <laughs> everyone's been a doula to that or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, where, and where's the, the, or the masculine, or how do we invite, you know, men into understanding this mm. part of us? Um, well, I, I think actually every time I explain my work to men and the, the whole, you know, just a, a kind of brief summary of the the cycle, the menstrual cycle, my my experience is always that men are like totally understanding. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh yes, that's that's very very familiar from you know living with their partners or, or, or working with women, and um, so I guess it's yeah how to to find um, a dialogue and way of, of, of communicating that. And I think the first step is, or very important step is that women can begin to, you know, understand, observe, know. And if, if we experience our cycles from a, a place of self-acceptance and, and, and as something very positive to our lives, then um, yeah, lots of things then change in our, um intimate and and work life and, and relationships and um i think it's a, it's a very powerful time now between the the, the feminine and the masculine men men and women there is just so much <laughs> in movement and um and i i feel very drawn at the moment i feel like it's time i, I want to um bring together men, men and women in within circle and um really open up a space for for deep listening between men and women i think um there is a, um a lot of accumulated pain like collectively uh from women but also men their their experience of growing up as men within patriarchal cultures and what that's meant to to them and even men now you know in in relation to the feminist movement there's 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 so much that has opened up there and mm. and i really want to create um I've, I've started this this new journey of of creating um spaces for men and women to come together and and really um be able to listen to each other deeply and i, I think there's a a lot of healing that needs to take place there Beautiful, Sophia. Mm -hmm. um, Bijan and Catherine, friends here on the island, established a women's and men's circle. And so we meet monthly and it really is beautiful. Oh, it's yeah. about, you know, trying to, yeah, literally do that. And it's, yeah, um, it's a very so nourishing space and, and just so important. It's just, you know, the, it's the together, you know, we have to, yeah, to disconnect <laughs> and be males, <laughs> males with males and females with females. Mm -hmm. Um, but we, you know, it's this, it's this joint conversation mm. that we need to step into. What do you, which takes me, I mean, what do you think in terms of the collective conversations we need to step into, um, with, you know, with that, with that, with each other and also with the earth? Have you got a view on that? Um, between men and women, for example. Oh, just, yeah, that, yes. I'm sort of, yeah, both men and women and mm. and also in relation to the earth. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think there's like, we're at this stage where we can see there's so much out of balance, isn't there, around us and, and in the world. And, and it, it does really feel like it's a, a time to... Um, I mean that part part of this the whole um, feminist movement and and the, the um, feminine spirituality movement is 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 about you know bringing back um, uh, into the center the values associated with with the feminine um, that have you know really been so pushed aside so and and yet also um, reconnecting to the masculine in also you know what are all the positive qualities of, of masculinity mm -hmm. i think that that's also has come out very much in in this um this journey and this these circles is that um many men feel now that that it's like the whole masculine is 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 
you're bad you know <laughs> to put it in a very simple yeah. way you know? um so th there's also a whole movement you know within men's groups and, and and that whole reflection you know what is it that we can bring through you know of the the um you know that is affirmative within the masculine and with the feminine what is the shadow of both of, mm. of, of those um and how all of that um is so needed just in terms of the the social crisis that we're seeing around us and and ecological and um yeah just just you, you know even this this last year with um with the with the covid you know that the somehow this collective kind of slowing down this this <laughs> imposed confinement which is kind of so shocking and contrary to the the capitalist model which just yeah. has to keep on and on growing and creating and producing and consuming and I mean it hasn't it, it doesn't seem like it, at all it's being taken as, as an opportunity to yeah. well, p the p political powers are not it, it could be an, an incredible wake-up call you know to see that you know we you know the impact, you know, when everything just stopped, you know, the flying around, the driving, it, it was just so powerful as well, wasn't it? Just how the the levels of pollution, you know, dra dramatically dropped, how the wildlife just started reappearing, you know, it's incredible. Mm. Mm. <laughs> but we haven't, you know, it is a great opportunity and I don't think maybe individually or collectively we've really honoured that in a, in a deep way. But it takes time. It takes time to drop into, mm. into a deeper conversation yeah. and connection, doesn't it? Mm. No, and at, at, at small levels, and, and for, for a lot of people, I think it's been a really deep, deep process. 2020 was like um, a very powerful year for, for many people. And, mm. and although we, you know, it's very uncomfortable when you're in the the crisis and the change and the unknown um it's it's also one of my passions you know how those moments are um, an opportunity to really come in contact with something much more real inside of us and 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 yeah these moments of change you know we, we yeah we need we need support at those times and and but they are incredible opportunities to um, step out in new directions and, and, and connect with our creativity in new ways and and I think it, it just helps me so much to be in contact with with nature because it, it's continual change you know outside yes. it's, it's um, um, in the natural world it's like it's constantly changing and that that really helps me to adapt and, and, and learn to be more flexible myself it does, isn't it? It's just even just the just going out there and physically, just you, how you can you feel better. But just seeing seeing those cycles, seeing that change, and that it's all sort of okay. And and I suppose we're sort of cycling back to the to your period where you know there's the pain, but the the pain is also where's the if we can sit with that and the information mm. of that or the uncomfortableness of that of of that yeah. change and and yeah. see it and all in a different pattern and. Yeah. yeah yeah so mm. well is there anything you want to say in particular before we go into our ceremonial space um well i was just really yeah starting to connect with that because uh we're at a very special time of the year you know that that um um well here in the in the northern hemisphere you know this um the cold of the winter but then i was just remembering as as you spoke somehow that um we live with, with Gemma in in a village and we have lots of fields and woods nearby and it's all frozen at the moment but the um, the farmers have been planting lots of seeds and there are like seeds um everywhere on the paths that, that have been planted and in the fields and um yeah just just excited about connecting now with with this time of the year and um yeah the whole 
possibility of everything that 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 um, the seed, you know, the metaphor, that the symbol of of a seed can bring us. Uh, it's <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> the seed holds everything, and actually, lovely. I loved um, Petra. She was on episode. What did I do? six maybe and she talked about being a seed waterer you know what what's mm -hmm. what um seeds are you watering and so yeah. i love that metaphor so yeah shall we do a little yeah. talk us through and um and also if you want to do it in in espanol or uh-huh or or by or what about doing bilingually or yeah do you want to do it bilingually that would be fabulous <laughs> yeah I could try. That, that feel okay <laughs> yeah that's great mm -hmm. wonderful so thank you hmm. bless you so um so well one invitation now for this this um i want to guide um a short um, ritual ceremony connection with this this moment in the year which um, is an, an ancient Celtic festival in bulk or uh, th which later was um, incorporated into the, um, the Catholic Church with the candle mass Candelaria in Spanish entonces quiero dar un, un pequeño espacio ahora para conectar con este momento del año en el hemisferio norte que tiene sus raíces en una festival muy antigua que se llama Imbolc, que luego fue recuperado por la, o asimilado por la Iglesia Católica con la Candelaria. Um, so it's, it's um, the point uh, exactly between the winter solstice and the spring equinox. So around the first, second of February. So as we come up to this this date or or actually on on the 2nd of february you could um do this small ritual or, or as you listen to to this now um entonces um, vamos a, a centrarnos en ese momento muy potente entre el solsticio de invierno y el equinoccio de primavera es justo en el punto medio en esta um, celebración antigua que es el, el, el festival de la regeneración this is this ancient festival of, of renovation and this moment where this you know winter is 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 very we're really still in in the the depth of winter in many places it's covered can be covered in in snow and 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 very cold and, and invigorating and at the same time, we start to see these um, these signs of, of very initial signs of, of new life. In this moment, that in the hemisphere north, we can be in the full summer with a lot of cold, which can also activate that cold. And at the same time, we begin to see some of the first signs, or the seed is very present in this moment. Um, in our garden, we have um, a bougainvillea ah. tree, um, which in the um, summer is this beautiful, intense um, pink, purpley color. And but now um, it's you know the flowers are they're, they're completely dead, but it's just so magical that in, inside the the dead flower are the seeds, you know. <laughs> I just think that is, oh, it is, it is such a powerful image, isn't it? And such a paradox, you know, yeah. it, and it goes back to our lovely living and dying. You, you remember when Meredith said, sit with something that's dying and we saw the life in it? Yeah, totally. Oh. Sí, sí, es que decía que he bajado a nuestro jardín, tenemos un bougainvillea, que claro, en, en verano es un color intenso, eh, fucsia. Y ahora mismo, pues, ¿no? La, la flor está, está muerta, está seca, pero si tú abres la flor, aquí dentro hay, hay tres semillas, ¿no? Y esto es una metáfora tan potente, ¿no? Que ahora comentaba Penélope, nos conocimos en un retiro sobre la vida y la muerte. Y la facilitadora Meredith, eh, una de las propuestas fue salir a la naturaleza y conectar con algo que está muriendo. 
y la experiencia siempre fue que cuando ves la, la muerte en la naturaleza, siempre a la vez hay, hay vida, ¿no? hay, hay brotes, hay semillas. Um, so this is a really powerful time of the year to, um, if you can, go out and uh, for a walk and, and find some of these seeds that, that often look, they look dead. But there is there is the seed inside the the, the old shell or the, the dead leaf or flowers. Um, entonces te, te invito antes de esta ceremonia um, poder tener contigo una, una semilla o varias semillas que puedes ir a, a buscar si tienes la oportunidad de pasear en la naturaleza y, y buscar alguna semilla. I mean, if you can't um, go for a walk in, in nature if for whatever reason you're in a city or confined and you can't do that then I would just invite you to um, find a seed in your house it could even be you know an almond a walnut uh, uh, and sometimes we have necklaces that have seeds you know some um, the, the symbol of, of a seed would be now is a really good time of the year to, to connect with the seed entonces, aunque no puedas salir a la naturaleza y, y buscar una semilla, pues igual en tu casa puedes encontrar alguna semilla, o una almendra, un nuez, o un, un collar que tenga semillas. Entonces, sí, tener contigo una, una semilla y también una, una vela. Es como en este momento... Del, del ciclo cuando ya está volviendo la luz, ¿no? It's this time in the cycle where the light starts to return more and more. Um, it's this festival of um, the quickening and, and feeling this, the fire in the seed, you know, coming back to life and, and, and stirring in the earth. So if you can have a candle with you as well for this little ceremony. <laughs> Y el, el, el fuego es un, un elemento muy importante en este eh, momento del año. Es como el, el, la chispa dentro de la semilla, ¿no? Ese fuego que va a renovar la tierra y también la luz que, que vuelve a crecer, ¿no? Los días poquito a poquito van haciéndose más largos. So, um, just to invite you to take um time to come into a quiet place in yourself and just feel the the support of the earth under your body just to feel that that depth and and nourishment that the earth is and has Entonces, tomando un, un tiempo para aquietarte, ir hacia adentro, sentir la tierra debajo de tu cuerpo, aunque no sea un contacto directo, pero visualizar, sentir la, la fuerza, la nutrición de la tierra debajo de tu cuerpo. And just feeling through your breath, uh, inhaling, bringing in the new, filling up and renewing and exhaling, letting go. It's really feeling yourself through your breath, part of this cycle of renewal continually. Y simplemente observando a través de tu respiración este ciclo de renovarte, llenarte de aire fresco, nuevo, de exhalar lo viejo y sentirte parte de este ciclo de, de renovación.
And I invite you to just simply um, place one hand, could be your left hand on um, your heart or the area of your heart and your right hand in your belly. Just feeling yourself coming more and more back into yourself, your, your home, your depth. Y te invito a colocar tu mano izquierdo encima de la zona de tu corazón y tu mano derecho encima de tu vientre. Un, un gesto muy sencillo que nos ayuda a, a volver aún más a nosotras mismas, nosotros mismos. Como un volver a nosotros a lo profundo. Just feeling in your heart area. Mm. Your connection, your capacity to, to love, to share, to nurture yourself and, and others. And your connection with your belly, with your creativity, your deepest dreams, your potential, all the seeds inside of you. Y sintiendo tu conexión con, con tu corazón, con toda tu capacidad de, de amar, de, de cuidar, de nutrir, nutrirte a ti misma y, y a los demás. Y a la tierra. Y en tu vientre poder sentir toda tu capacidad creativa, todo lo que estás gestando, tu potencial, todas las semillas que están albergadas en ti, en la tierra. And we're also still in, in a very special time of the year as, as a whole new year starts with all the potential of the beginnings, this um, start of 2021. And we can really bring to this um, ancient festival of, of Imbolc, um, really bring our, um, our dreams, our desires, our intentions for this year, we can keep offering them to, to the power of this, um, this moment in the cycle of the year. Y estamos en un momento potente del inicio de, de un año nuevo, del, del 2021. Y, podemos traer um, a esta ceremonia de, de Involk, de la Candelaria, todos nuestros deseos, eh, sueños, intenciones para este año y seguir potenciándolas aquí. So I just invite you to um, look up and, and connect with the, the seed you have. Um, prepared for this um, ceremony and if you haven't got one right now you can also just imagine <laughs> the seed in your hands. Um, entonces te invito a, a tomar esta semilla en, en tus manos, like just cr create um, a bowl with your hands that you can hold your seed in. Um, puedes crear como un, un bol, um, tus manos sostienen esta semilla y, y si no tienes una en este momento también puedes usar todo el, el poder de la visualización, de visualizar una semilla pequeña. And just holding this, this seed in your hands. Um, 
you can visualize this this seed um, deep in the earth in this moment of the year where the earth is is still cold and 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 invigorating um, and the warmth of the sun also starts to slowly come through more and more the light the rain the snow just feel how the elements around your seed buried in the earth are starting to to help um, ignite the, the fire uh, inside of your seed Entonces puedes imaginar esta semilla en tus manos en, enterrada en la tierra, como en la tierra fría, con toda su energía, que empieza a recibir los rayos del sol, que va llegando poquito a poquito más calor, la luz del sol, la lluvia, nieve. Y todos estos elementos van a ayudar a activar este fuego dentro de tu semilla. So I just invite you now to connect with this seed, with um, something that you feel that you are. Um, gestating that's growing inside of you that you want to see um, grow and, and flourish this year maybe it's um, some creative project something very clear that you you know that you're you're working on maybe something in your house maybe something you're creating with your hands or something that's inside of you that you're preparing but it could also be um, a part of you that um, you want to bring out more and more and give more strength to and and um, and share with others just just let yourself connect and 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 feel what what could this um, seed be now that you want to um, honor and, and bring to this ritual. Maybe there are many, but you could just choose one or, or, or even have you know two or three. If they come very strongly, just just bring bring the seeds that are that are really coming um, to you now. It could be just one or maybe two or three. Entonces, con esta semilla en tus manos, te, te invito a conectar con algo que en este momento sientes que estás gestando dentro de ti. Algo puede ser que estás creando, preparando, igual algo dentro de tu casa o algo ¿no? con tus manos que, o que, que estás creando y quieres que que salga a la luz este año. También puede ser una parte de ti que claramente eh, sientes que está madurando, que quieres mm, potenciar y, y, y compartir y que, que salga cada vez más de, de ti esta parte. Y puede ser que, que hay una muy clara o, o, o varias. Deja simplemente que vaya apareciendo esta esta semilla o semillas ahora. So as you <clears throat> connect more clearly with, with what it is that um, the seed that um, is, is growing um, just dating inside of you at the moment. Just connect with um, this beautiful energy of, of being receptive, just feeling how this seed um, 
is receiving from all the elements exactly what it needs now to to sprout and to start making its first roots and, and downwards and shoots upwards and so that it'll be like a really strong um, and supported start to this seed that you're going to see growing this year. Entonces cuando tengas claro ¿no? esta semilla o semillas que, que están dentro de ti, te invito a abrirte a, a la receptividad, ¿no? a una apertura a, a todos los elementos que van a um, imagine with the seed in your hands that you're um, surrounding this seed with all the potential that it has inside with um, with the strength of, of love Feel the connection with your heart and, and this energy that can circulate from your heart down your arms, through your hands and just totally surround your, your seed with um, the love that will help it to, to sprout and grow roots downwards and um, start to reach up towards the light and and grow upwards. Entonces puedes eh, con tu semilla en tus manos eh, sentir como a través de, de sostenerlo en tus manos lo estás rodeando de, de amor. Puedes conectar otra vez con tu corazón y sentir la energía circular desde tu corazón, bajando por tus brazos, hacia tus manos y rodeando tu semilla de la fuerza del amor que le va a acompañar, le va a ayudar en ese brotar, en ese en bajar sus, sus primeras raíces y empezar a crecer hacia la luz. And I also invite you with with your seed with um, what it is that you um, are wanting to bring forth and and share bring out into the world this year that you can um, just bring your seed closer to the light of your candle the little the flame of your candle and um, really feel the 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 flame, the fire, the warmth, also um, giving your seed everything that it needs um, for this new start. Entonces te invito también a acercar tu semilla a la vela que tienes encendida y conectar con, con la llama, con el fuego, con la chispa dentro de tu semilla y que le vaya llegando también ese, ese calor, esta energía del fuego en esta um, ceremonia del, del fuego y de la regeneración. This is an, an, one of the ancient fire festivals mm -hmm. and yeah, just allow the, the power of, of the flame of your candle to, to give your seed um, what it needs at this moment. And just invite you to stay a few moments in, in silence, just feeling the power of the, the silence of your seed with all its potential, just waiting and receiving um, and getting ready to start um, this journey out into the light. Entonces te invito a estar unos momentos en silencio, simplemente sentir ¿no? ese poder del, de la espera, la, la quietud, la receptividad 
¿no? tu semilla preparándose y recibiendo todo lo que necesita para emprender este nuevo viaje. I invite you to um, have the seed kind of cupped between your hands, like um, in a position where the seed is is held in the dark between your your hands. Entonces te invito a tener tu semilla como dentro de tus manos, como encubiertos, protegidos en la oscuridad dentro de tus manos. And then just very slowly um, open up your, your hands to make um, an, a very open um, gesture of, of offering your seed, um, offering your seed to, um, to the light, to to the world, just to um, take this, this small step of, of honoring your seed and, and what it is going to, to bring, bring out to, into your life, into your home, into your community, and the ripples, however small that your seed is going to make, however small or big. Entonces, desde este gesto de, de tener tu semilla guardada dentro de tus manos, te invito a lentamente abrir tus manos en un gesto de, de apertura, de, de ofrecer tu semilla um, como una entrega que vas a hacer um, de ti um, hacia afuera desde lo más interno hacia adentro, hacia tu entorno más íntimo, tu hogar, tu comunidad, hacia el mundo. And the inbulk has traditionally been a, a ceremony of initiation, ¿no? of, um, of marking a, a new step, a new beginning, um, a new path. So take with you all the the strength and power and support of this moment in the cycle of the year to help you take whatever new step you need to take um, to to nourish this seed that is is going to bring um, more beauty into your life and into the world y el, este festival antiguo siempre ha sido un festival de una ceremonia de, de iniciación, de, de empezar un, un camino nuevo, una, una renovación hacia, hacia adelante. Entonces te invito a, a recibir toda la fuerza de este momento del año para acompañarte a dar un paso nuevo y a, a que esta semilla pueda brotar y, y traer más, más belleza y sanación a tu vida y a tu, a tu entorno. Mm. Well, just um, place your, your seed somewhere next to your candle. <laughs> ah. And just give some time to your body to, to simply rest and <sighs> make whatever um, move you need just to um, 
Oh, feel yourself in a, in a place of openness and, and rest and, and gratitude. Mm. <laughs> Entonces, simplemente date un momento para mover tu cuerpo, respirar, hacer lo que necesites para sentirte descansada y, y agradecida. Yeah, it's, um, the end of, of any ritual is always a beautiful moment to connect with, with gratitude. So just give thanks in your own way to whatever you want to give your gratitude to. Sí, el final de cualquier ritual es un momento muy, muy bello para conectar con la gratitud. Así que date un momento para agradecer lo que quieras en ese momento. Mm, so. Ah, estoy muy repetida. Gracias, Sophie. Wow. Es súper beautiful y súper meaningful. Y me gustaría, me gustaría que tus seeds florezcan. Gracias por estar aquí y ofrecerlas hoy. Sí, gracias por estar aquí y ofrecerlas hoy. To each one of you who's been listening or, or watching and yeah many many blessings on all of our seeds yeah it's it's so inspiring to to know that there are so many of us you know wanting to to offer our seeds and and you know your podcast is also a beautiful seed that is spreading you know lots of ripples mm. around the world yeah thank you Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, I am so grateful for your listening and attention and being part of the Earth Converse community and planting seeds of different ways we can connect and have these conversations. So we'll put a pause here and see you back for the next Earth Converse podcast. In the meantime, go out and enjoy Earth, one conversation at a time. <laughs>